All right, guys, today I'm going to show you you can easily remove the hood on your Articat Z1 Turbo EXT. I'd imagine this would also work on similar sleds. Uh, in this particular uh, episode, though, we're going to be going ahead and changing the spark plugs on here. First thing you're going to want to do is there's going to be two, I believe, T20 torque screws right here that you're going to want to remove. And once you remove those, you got to make sure, or before, that you remove the top trim piece over there. That's easy, that just comes off, uh, it just slides out. So I just move this guy off to the side. Be careful, because there is some wires underneath it. Now, if you're looking at the sled from this angle, you can see that looks like we got, uh, looks like we got a coolant pipe or something right across here. And if we look down, we can locate what looks to be an injector. And then next to that injector, what I, I, I assume it's an injector, is a rubber hose, rather plumly looking one. And if you pull that back, just right, you can see the spark plug boots. Lots of room in here to get to it. <laughs> so, looks like I forgot to hit a record for the next clip. Uh, but what you're gonna wanna do is, if you're looking at that charge pipe, there's uh, gonna be two bolts on top of it. Those ones are, I believe, either 12 or 13 millimeter bolts, uh, uh, somewhere around that. Uh, go ahead and break those free, remove those, and then you'll see that there is a rubber boot that is leading uh, to the throttle body. Uh, uh, loosen up the hose clamps on there, and, and of course, pull that off and set that off to the side. Looks like I didn't hit record for this clip either, or something off my camera. Uh, but I forgot to mention that uh, if you're looking at the side of the sled, there's going to be a big air box. And the only way that you can uh, change the spark plugs uh, is you have to remove that air box. Now, if you look on the side of the sled, uh, there's, there's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt towards, uh, I believe it's a 10 millimeter bolt, uh, towards the front of the sled that takes, that takes one section off. And, and then there's going to be a, uh, another 10 millimeter bolt that's hidden behind some Torx screws. Uh, uh, towards the rear of the sled where you'd sit. Uh, if you're if you're sitting on the sled, and if you look down on this on my particular sled, there's two torque screws that are holding on. Uh, 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 they're holding on a black trim panel uh, that wraps around. Uh, remove those, and then you have access to that 10 millimeter uh, socket behind there. I think it's 10 millimeter, and you can pull that out, and you'll be able to uh, gently pull the air box out and set it off to the side. Uh, once you have that, uh, and once you have that set off to the side and out of the way, there's one other bolt you have to remove on, I believe it's called the charge pipe, uh, that's leaning towards the intake. Um, uh, I, it, this one's a big one. I think it's like a 16 millimeter uh, or something. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's, towards the, it's towards the front of the sled, and you can see that it's actually bolted right to the block. Uh, you're going to need an extension, uh, so just put your ratchet on that and break that one free. And then once you, then once you get that, bolt taken out you can completely uh, uh set the whole charge pipe off to the side and all right and to remove the plugs what you're going to want to do you're going to want to grab a uh, five eighths uh spark plug uh socket right here and then extension this extension is on the shorter side but it worked for me you're going to want to put it in there tore it around a bunch of times and then your plugs will come out that way. All right, and a uh, little tip in order to get the uh, spark plug boot off over there, which is behind this hose, uh, you're just gonna wanna uh, take a flathead and just pop it up underneath. Be very careful not to rip it. All right, so it looks like my camera did record uh, me, uh, uh, me putting the uh, air box back on and also putting the trim, uh, uh, the little trim panel that wraps around it back on in addition to the bolt uh, on the charge pipe, I believe that's what it's called. Uh, uh, so if you're having trouble uh, figuring out uh, how to take these bits off, uh, you can just kind of watch the video in reverse and and do it that way. Uh, I apologize for that. All right, once you got that bolt in nice and secure, kind of holds this to the block. What you're then gonna want to do is you is uh, wouldn't it be a bad idea to tighten this down if it came loose at all. Uh, now your next step, what you're gonna want to do here is. You can see this is the air box, and then this is the bit that it goes in. Now, when we took this off, we didn't take the air cleaner out because we really didn't have to. But in order for this this piece to go back inside of that piece easily, you're going to want to open up 
the back of this. It just turns right out, has instructions right on it, pretty easy. And you're just gonna wanna give this a yank, well, a slow yank, and you're just gonna wanna pull that right out, put that off to the side. Then what we can do is we can go ahead and start to push this in. You can see it's got like some grooves in it, and, and you'll feel it go in and you'll see it sit flush. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, right there. All you gotta do is just push it right in, just like that. And there you go. Now that piece is secured. Now, after this, after this, well, you can see, let me see if I can hold this up and film a little bit difficult here. And we take, we take our nuts, our nuts and bolts that we had and push these guys right on through here and tighten them down on both sides. See, there's also a hole over there hard to see but that would go on right there and you can get it from behind again so let's attach those to mention this is a 5 16th uh, head on this bolt you're gonna need and you're gonna also need an extension so you can get behind it on that side and what worked out for me was this isn't the proper way to do it but I just used some needle nose pliers just to hold the nut on the other side and I was able to get it down tight enough now on this side same thing, same size, same nut. Uh, it's gonna go through a hole right there, but you're gonna wanna make sure uh, that, it, uh, that it goes through this clip right here that holds these wires together. So just make sure you go through All that. right, we got that put back in. We gotta put, uh, gotta put through that uh, little wire fit right there. And now if you haven't done so already, uh, just go ahead and screw this guy back in. Just kind of push it in like that. And then go ahead and Grab the cover for this underneath all your tools that has fallen 2,000 feet away and slap it back on top. All right, we found the cover. It just goes on like so, like this, and like that. Now, next step is to, we got to slide this tab inside here, and it's supposed to go behind it, and then it'll sit flush. So you kind of put the camera down for this one, but you kind of got to bend these pieces and get this one back without breaking well, everything. I got it back in. I uh, ended up having to use a lighter uh, to bend it a little bit, just heat it up uh, so I could go back in. And then, I'm, and then in the future, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of chip these off uh, with, a, with a file or something to make it look a little nicer. Now that you get these all straight back together, grab your grab your nuts and your bolts and put your nuts behind there and you put your torque screws in there. And, and you tighten them down. Well, I hope that video helped. I know that the production quality definitely wasn't the best on it. Um, what I would suggest doing, if you're having trouble figuring out how to take the trim panels off, I would recommend watching this video uh, from reverse uh, to the front uh, uh, for some portions of it uh, because my camera decided not to work. I couldn't find any videos like this for any similar sled, so I really hope this helps you guys out. Um, um, uh, my sled, uh, uh, the nut sizes, nut and bolt size on my sled may be different, uh, uh because mine was in a crash, uh, by a previous owner, uh, uh, uh so there's kind of a lot of wonky stuff on the sled, uh, uh, so if I say, uh, uh, if I if I say a bolt size and if it's different from yours, uh, uh, it's pr it's probably just because it's like that on my sled because uh, there's a lot of weird random gremlins on this sled for some reason. Uh, so I hope that video helps you out, guys. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks.